This is Winning Cures Everything. Here's your host, Gary Seegers. It is Monday, March 4th, and this is Winning Cures Everything. I am your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. You can follow the show at Winning Cures or on Facebook, facebook.com slash Winning Cures Everything. Or just go to the website. Way easier that way. WinningCuresEverything.com is the place to go. Let's go on and give you the rundown for what we're going to talk about today. We're going to go over the NCAA tournament bubble teams. Uh, everybody else talks about the top four seeds and whatnot. We don't care about that. We just want to know who's getting in. That's what we want to talk about. Who's going to get in at the back of the bracket? It's always the best part about it. Uh, we're going to talk about Big Ten Commissioner Jim Delaney retiring uh, and exactly what that means. Is it good? Is it bad? We'll discuss it. And then I've got a, a few college basketball picks for you for tonight. Went 4-1 and one Friday. Went 5-4 and four Saturday. Went 1-4-1 one, and one on Sunday. Sunday was a bad day all around, and as I went through and, and looked at some of the other handicappers on Twitter and whatnot, it was a bad day all around for everybody. Uh, nothing went according to trend, according to what you would think. So we, uh, we're going to get back on it tonight. Only a few picks this evening. Uh, as always, subscribe to the show. Leave some comments. Share it out. Uh, leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcast. Help us get uh, get higher in those ratings there. Um, let's go ahead and, and talk about the NCAA tournament bubble teams. So every Monday we do this. And we go over the first four teams out and the last 12 teams in per bracket matrix. Now today what I did is I actually went through and kind of I put some numbers. I put best win, worst loss, all that. It's going to be a lot of data, but this way you know – what you're getting, right? Uh, let's go on and start with the first four out. The first team out of the bracket, they've got Temple. Their net ranking is 57 right now. They're one and six in quadrant one wins, uh, five and one in quadrant two opportunities. So overall, uh, six and seven in quad one and quad two. Their best win, they beat Houston earlier in the year. Houston's only got two losses. They lost over the weekend to UCF. They also lost on the road at Temple early in the season on a late uh, charge, no call, or it was a call, but it maybe shouldn't have been. It, either way, had that call not been made, Houston probably wins the game, but Temple got the win there. Their worst loss, they lost to Penn at home. Penn is number 116 in the net. Their strength of schedule, this is a big part of this. Strength of schedule is number 77. I think Temple has a, a pretty decent shot of getting into the tournament because of their strength of schedule. I might be I might be wrong though. Uh, they need they need to take care of some business this week and in the conference tournament next week. Uh, next team out, Murray State. Their net is fifty two, but zero and two against quad one, one and two against quad two. Uh, their best win was against Austin P. That's not going to cut it. Murray State has no shot at getting in as an at large. They could win the conference tournament. We'll see. Their worst loss at Jacksonville State. They're number 134. Their best win was at Austin P. They're number 133 in the net. Uh, strength of schedule, 258. Not going to cut it. Next up, Now, the only other part of this for Murray State is John Morant, right? The NCAA tends to lean towards trying to get teams in if they have a big-time NBA lottery pick because it means more eyeballs. It's what happened with Alabama last year. Alabama was 17-14. and 14. And, yeah, they won a couple of games in the SEC tournament, but they found a way to get them in. There was no way that they should have been a nine seed, but they had a strong strength of schedule. They had some good wins. Helped them out. Uh, number three on the first four teams out is Indiana. Their net is 55. Here is why they are on the bubble. They are six and nine in quad one opportunities. That's a whole lot of quad one games but they got six quad one wins. That's crazy. They're also one and five in quad two wins, uh, so not good on that. Their, their best win, they beat Michigan State twice. Michigan State, uh, number eight in the net. They beat them at home. They beat them on the road. Uh, their worst loss is at Rutgers. Rutgers is number 98 in the net, so even that is a quad two uh, loss. Uh, their strength of schedule, number 26. That's, uh, that's a pretty big deal. Number four. Creighton. I think Creighton has a great shot. If they've got a good week this week and they, they show out well in the Big East tournament, they're only 15 and 13 right now, but their net is number 50. They've got 
uh, 13 quad one games. They went three and ten. They went six and three against quad two. Their best win at Marquette. So they beat Marquette uh, on the road. Marquette number 26 in the net. Their worst loss, Seton Hall number 63. They don't have a really bad loss. They've got some really good wins. Uh, their strength of schedule is number 12, and that's going to be the biggest thing. Their strength of schedule is 12. They played a really difficult schedule. I think they've got a shot to get in so long as this week goes well. Uh, the last 12 teams that BracketMatrix.com has in. Seton Hall, that is the last team to earn an at-large, according to Bracket Matrix, which averages out 102 different brackets. Uh, Seton Hall, 63, is their net ranking. Four and seven in quad one, six and three in quad two. Their best win was uh, an overtime last second win over Kentucky, uh, and that was in Madison Square Garden. Worst loss at home to St. Louis. They're number 114 in the net. Their strength of schedule is number 46. Clemson, 40 in the net. They might be in trouble. They're one and 10 in quad one, four and two in quad two. Their best win is against Virginia Tech, who was without Justin Robinson. Their worst loss was at Miami, who's number 93. Strength of schedule is number 33. They played a lot of tough games. They might be able to get in because of that, but they need, like, they got some work to do. Next, Alabama, a 12 seed. All of these, by the way, have been 12 seeds so far. Alabama, net number 54. They're 2 and 8 in quad one opportunities, 7 and 3 in quad two. Best win is Kentucky at home. Their worst loss, way back in November. Georgia State came into Tuscaloosa and beat them. Georgia State is number 135. Uh, that is the second worst loss of anybody on this entire list. Uh, so 135 for them, but their strength of schedule is 22. So they Alabama, really tough schedule. We'll see what happens this week. They've got Auburn at home this week and a road game at Arkansas. And then, of course, the SEC tournament next week. Arizona State, also a 12 seed. Their net is 68. I'm not sure that Arizona State has done enough. And if they lose another bad game, which, whew, they they have the the worst loss of anybody on this. Oh, I'm sorry, the second worst. Alabama's was the third worst. Uh, but Arizona State, uh, they got a win over Kansas. They're 3-3 three and three against quad one, 7-2 and two against quad two. They beat Kansas. However, they lost at home to Washington State who is number 190 uh, in the net. Their strength of schedule is number 73. I don't think that's right uh, because the Pac-12 has been pretty awful this year, but we'll see. Uh, Fifth, Minnesota. Net is 56. They're 2-8 in quad one, 7-3 in quad two. Uh, Their best win is at Wisconsin. And their worst loss is at Boston College. And Boston College is number 113. Wisconsin was number 17. Their strength of schedule is 57. Uh, Utah State, 11 seed. I think they played their way in by beating Nevada at home. Their net is number 30. Only 2-2 two and two in quad one opportunities and 2-3 two and three in quad two opportunities. So not a lot of big games here. They beat Nevada, who is number 23 in the net. Uh, but they also lost at home to Fresno State, who's number 89. Their strength of schedule is number 99. Let's, uh, let's jump into uh, also an 11 seed. I'm sorry. TCU. Their net is 48. They're 2-7 and seven in quad one, 5-4 and four in quad two. Best win is Iowa State. They beat them twice, on the road and at home. Worst loss is at West Virginia, who's number 117. Their strength of schedule is 36. So they've, they've had a pretty tough schedule. Uh, I think they will get a little lenience for that. Florida, an 11 seed. Their net is 35. 3-9 three and nine in quad one opportunities, 5-4 and four in quad two. Sorry, 5-1 and one in quad two. Their best win is at LSU. They did that last week. But they followed that up on Saturday with a loss at home to Georgia, who was number 102 in the net. Uh, strength of schedule is number 61. I'm still trying to figure this net ranking out that the NCAA has put together. I, I don't understand all of this. I don't know that the net will have anything to do with seeding, but... The ranking is really strange. The computers seem to love Florida for some reason. I just I can't figure it out. I don't I don't get it. Their strength of schedule is 61. Let's move on to the 10 seeds. So these are the last four teams. Um, they're all 10 seeds. They're all firmly in the tournament as of right now. NC State, number 31 in the net. They're two and eight in quad one, five and zero oh in quad two. The best win is against Auburn, which. 
all those opportunities in the ACC, and their best win is against Auburn. You know, number 20 in the net, I get that. But uh, their worst loss, they've got the worst loss of anybody that I have listed so far at Wake Forest. Wake Forest is number 198 in the net. And on top of that, their strength of schedule outside of Murray State, NC State strength of schedule is number 211. Their non-conference strength of schedule was nothing other than Auburn. They played basically all quad four teams. Did not test themselves at all in the non-conference. Really surprised at that. Uh, I think this team might end up having some problems on Selection Sunday if they don't get a a big win uh, at some point over the next week and in the conference tournament. Uh, St. John's, also a 10 seed. Uh, their net ranking is 61. They're 6-4 and four against quad one opportunities, 4-4 uh, four and four in quad two. Their best win is over Villanova. Their worst loss is at home against DePaul. DePaul is 104. Strength of schedule number 68. Kind of found that surprising considering they've played Duke and they play in the Big East. But uh, but other than that, like there were not a lot of non-conference big games. They, they played basically nobody. Another 10 seed, and this is the, the last two here, Texas. Number 33 in the net. They're 5-8 and eight against Quad 1, 4-3 and three against Quad 2. Best win is against North Carolina on a neutral court. That is humongous. Uh, and it also kind of offsets the fact that they lost at home to Radford early in the year. Their strength of schedule was number 8. They tested themselves in the non-conference. Yeah, they lost to Radford, but they also beat North Carolina. It's kind of the deal with Alabama. Yeah, they lost to Georgia State, but they also beat Kentucky. So it kind of plays itself out there. Uh, and a, a tough strength of schedule is always going to help out. Ohio State is number 10. They are the first 10 seed. Uh, so this is the last one that we will talk about as far as the bubble stuff goes. 43 in the net. They are 4-8 and eight in quad one opportunities, 4-2 and two in quad two. Their best win is at Cincinnati, which, of course, you're in the Big Ten and your best win is out of conference. A little strange. Uh, but at Cincinnati, who's number 21 in the net, their worst loss at home to Illinois. Illinois is number ninety-two. They got a losing record. Uh, their strength of schedule for Ohio State number forty. That is a lot of bubble teams. I understand, but that's where we are sitting as of March fourth, when we've got one week of the regular season left, and then all the Power Five conference tournaments begin after that. Uh, a whole lot of stuff to go down between now and then. Obviously, we'll talk more about the bubble and everything else uh, over on the website if you're interested in the SEC tournament. Uh, over at winningcureseverything.com, I've got what the standings look like right now as far as tiebreakers and whatnot. Uh, and the bracket is already laid out on the website so that you can see which SEC teams are going to face who, etc. cetera. Uh, Alabama is the nine seed against Florida, the eight seed, playing for the right to play against LSU. And then you've got other things after that. So uh, to go check that out, winningcureseverything.com. It's the first post on the page. Let's move on to the next topic. Big Ten Commissioner Jim Delaney, he is retiring in 2020. Now, it's, it's June 30th, 2020, to be fair. Uh, he has been the commissioner for the Big Ten since 1989, so we're talking 30 years now. I mean, it's a long, long time. Uh, it's For me, and from what I understand, there's two different sides of this. One, if you talk to some people, Delaney is one of the few guys behind the scenes that are really uh, pushing for playoff expansion. On the other side, uh, this is one more decision maker from the old guard that's going to move on, making room for new era thinkers that that don't have a, a strong affinity for the old bowl system, right? So depending on who you ask, this could actually be a step in the right direction or the wrong direction for college football playoff expansion. And it all depends on what you want to have happen, right? So the biggest problem right now is the people that are in positions of power are so used to, uh, they not used to, but they really love the bowl system, and they've got friends in positions of power that run these bowl games, right? They want the Rose Bowl to always be what it is. They want the Sugar Bowl to always be what it is. They want... You know, it used to be the Blue Bonnet Bowl that whatever, right? So bowl games were a bigger deal back in the day. Now, it is, it's all about the playoff. Now that they've gotten the 14 playoff in, and if you make it bigger, that can only mean 
more money, more interest, et cetera, right? Like when you have a playoff, it tends to get people more excited. Look at every other level of sports, every other type of sports in the country. There is a playoff for all of them, and it's generally bigger than four teams. That's just the way it goes. Every tennis tournament, every golf tournament, it's all tournaments. And you play until you get a winner. And that's just the way it goes. So, this could be a step in the right direction. Jim Delaney was very confusing. Because he is one of the guys that was always talking about conference traditions and all that. He will be the first to tell you about how amazing the Rose Bowl is and the opportunity for teams like Ohio State to get to go to that, even though he probably wishes they would have gotten into the playoff. On the other side, he's one of those that always chase dollars, at least when it was in the right position, I would imagine. Uh, but he would chase dollars, and that's why you've got Rutgers and Maryland in the Big Ten, because he was chasing cable subscribers. He was revolutionary in that he started the Big Ten uh, television network before the SEC did. He found a way to make it work for his conference. But it was still an old way of thinking, especially with the bowl stuff, right? So, uh, of course, we wish him the best. Jim Delaney has been around forever. He's probably the most powerful person in collegiate sports. Uh, But I am curious to see who they will bring in in the next go-round. We're still stuck with Larry Scott in the Pac-12. We'll see what happens with them. Either way, let's move on to college basketball picks. It's Monday, March 4th. I've only got three games tonight. I got two sides and one total. We'll see what happens. Uh, Last night, not a good night. Started out with a win and then went one and four the rest of the way. Uh, You can find all the picks, by the way, over at winningcureseverything.com. Just click on gambling picks up in the navigation bar. Here is tonight's picks. I've got Virginia minus six at Syracuse. I think they handle Syracuse this evening. Uh, I've got over 131 and a half in Texas against Texas Tech. Both of these teams are scoring like crazy right now. Yes, they're both going to try and slow it down, I would imagine, for this game a little bit, but I think they can still get over 131. Uh, they are shooting really high averages right now, going over 131.5. Uh, I'm also taking Kennesaw State plus 24.5 at Lipscomb. That's in the A Sun tournament. Uh, look, Lipscomb has not beaten anybody by more than 23 points all season. Just because we're moving into conference tournament play, I don't think matters. Uh, Kennesaw State plus 24.5 at Lipscomb tonight. Those are the three picks. As always, find them over at winningcureseverything.com slash gambling dash picks, or just go to winningcureseverything.com, click gambling picks up in the navigation bar. It'll take you right to the little spreadsheet. You can check every pick that I've ever made from January 4th on, and along with all of our football picks, college football, NFL, etc., from the last three years. So you can find everything you need to there. Um, yeah, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Of course, we do this Monday through Friday every week. Uh, it's 10, 15, 20 minutes of your time every day. A little sports news, a little fun, some entertainment for your afternoon. We appreciate you guys checking out the show. Make sure you share it out. Subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe to Apple Podcasts. Give us a like on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. We will see you guys again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.